In this After Effects tutorial, you will learn how to add text behind moving objects. And that's similar to what I did in one of my last videos about slow motions and in another video about masking. I will use Rotobrush 2.0 in this tutorial, probably the easiest way to rotoscope at this moment. This Rotobrush tool is included in After Effects version 17.5 and newer, and this version was released in October 2020. Before I move over to After Effects, a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Use Squarespace to create a beautiful and professional looking website. You don't need to have any web design knowledge. You can just start with one of their beautiful templates and they are super easy to adjust to your taste and needs. So whether you want to set up a blog post website, an online portfolio or a webshop to sell your products, you can do it all with Squarespace. Use the link squarespace.com slash Torisium to claim a 10% discount on your first purchase. The links can be found in the video description. Okay, now it's time to move over to After Effects and start some editing. Inside After Effects, I've got this short clip from the ballet dancer ready on the timeline. As you can see here, it also has some motion blur, so we need to take this into account. But first, let's find a frame where there's not too much motion blur going on. Let's use this one. I'm going to double click on the layer and this will open up in a new separate window as you can see here. I'm going to zoom in first so we can work more precisely. And now we can enable the Roto Brush tool which you can find here on top. The mouse pointer will now turn into this green crosshair. You can now click and hold the left mouse button and draw a stroke over the subject that you would like to include in your selection. After Effects will now use artificial intelligence to figure out what should be included in the mat. And as you can see here, it does this pretty well. You can add more sections by simply drawing another line over your subject. And you can continue this same action until the entire subject is selected. Sometimes After Effects also includes parts that you don't want to have included. And that's where you need to help the AI a little bit. In this example, I want to exclude the part between her feet. But as you can see, the circle is a little bit too large for small adjustments. You can change the size by holding the control key combined with the left mouse button and then move the mouse up or down to change the size. And you can remove parts by holding the alt key or command key while you're painting the lines. You'll see that the crosshair will turn red and you can now remove parts from the selection. After removing, you can release the alt key and continue painting green lines and adding other sections to the mask. It might take a few attempts back and forward and adding and removing sections to get the perfect outline that you want. Take the time to make your selection as accurate as possible in this first frame. And that's important because After Effects will use this frame as a reference to create the shape of the mat in the other frames. And sometimes, as you can see here, it takes a couple more strokes to help After Effects figure out what should be included or not. Okay, this is more than good enough for this tutorial. I'll zoom out and go back to the selection tool by hitting the V key and then hit spacebar to start rendering and playback. After Effects will now do its magic and start animating the selection frame by frame. You can see the progress in this so-called propagation banner at the bottom of this layer panel. Mainly depending on the length of the clip, the complexity of the selection and the power of your system, this can take a couple of minutes. And this means that real-time playback probably won't be happening. But this also provides the opportunity to spot some improvements that might be required. Like this frame for example, I can now switch back to the Roto Brush tool and then remove this part from the selection. And with this correction I've given After Effects a new reference frame. Let me show you what I mean by opening up the layer properties and then go to the Roto Brush effect. If I open up strokes, you can see all the adjustments that we did for the first frame. And a little further in time, you can also see this single adjustment that I just did to the second reference frame. Another option to avoid corrections if you have a more complex selection is the option for best quality instead of standard. The standard option is a bit faster but does not have quite as much detail around the edges. On the other hand, the best quality option is a bit slower but more refined. If you make a change like this, then propagation will restart, as you can see here below. Anyway, I'm going to fast forward to the point where we see some motion blur, because I want to show you how you can improve this. This frame has got a lot of motion blur, let's zoom in on our feet. Here you can clearly see a rough outline as the result of the motion blur. This won't look great if you add anything else behind it, but there's a simple solution and that's the option to use motion blur in the Rotobrush effect settings. Now you can see that the outline is already much softer. 
And if I switch to the alpha boundary view, then have a look at the difference when I turn the effect on and off. This is really a huge difference as you can see. Ok, I'll switch back to the other view and then move up to her head to show you another way to improve. Here inside the effect controls panel you've got a couple of sliders to refine the edges. The feather option will soften the boundary, so if I turn this up you can see a very soft edge. Make sure you don't add too much feather, in this example you can see that it adds a halo around the subject and that's not what we want for this tutorial. So in this case a feather value of 5 should be fine. And then if you look at this outline here you can still see that it's pretty rough. And this is where you could adjust the contrast. This will affect the sharpness of the line but won't soften the boundary like feather does. So these two controls, feather and contrast can help you to improve or refine the edges. But sometimes this is still not good enough, let me show you what I mean by going to a frame without a lot of motion blur. Let's use this frame, if I zoom in you can see that the finer details like her hair are not included in the selection. And that's where the Revine Edges tool can help us, you can find this one underneath the Roto Brush tool. This tool works the same as the Roto Brush tool, but can be used for highly detailed edges. So if you paint over the edge with this tool, it will give you a bit of an x-ray look. In this way you can now see the many finer details that are included in the mat. You can use this Revine Edges tool on all kinds of detailed areas, like hair, face, fur and in this case on her dress. Just paint around the edges that require some more attention. But also keep in mind that if you add a lot of refined edges, then the rendering will also be a bit slower. And this may also work for parts where manual selection doesn't work that great. Like in this example, the selection of her hands can easily be fixed with this refine edges tool. And finally, you can always double check your selection by switching to the different view modes. On the left you've got the option to enable the X-ray view. Next to that you've got the alpha view. In this view you can clearly see what's included in the mat, even the smallest details like hairs for example. And finally we've also got the alpha overlay. This will show the foreground unchanged, but the background overlaid with a solid color, in this case red. I should also mention that now that we've used the refine edge tool, we've also got some controls for these specific parts. So this means that if I increase feather for example, that this will only affect the parts that were selected with the refine edges tool. Another Refine Edge control is the Smooth option. Increasing this value will reduce the sharpness of the curves on the boundaries by smoothing along the edge. In some cases this one can give a great result, but here it does not. Anyway, I'm satisfied with the selection that we made for this tutorial, so now I'm going to hit the Freeze button. This will lock our selection. After Effects will now render the Roto Brush effect for the entire workspace. This means that it will cache the results and will not be repropagating frame by frame every time we do a playback. This will definitely improve the speed of the other editing that we'll do inside After Effects. And if you want to add or remove something from your selection later on, you can unfreeze this propagation with the same button. As you can see, this may take a little while, so I'll fast forward this one so you don't have to wait. Ok, as you can see here the propagation is frozen, but if you want to unfreeze, like I said, you need to click this button again. We can now exit this layer and go back to the composition. And now you can see that she is perfectly cut out on a transparent background. In the next step I'll bring back the original background. I'll do this by duplicating the layer, then select the layer and remove the roto brush effect from it. So now we've got the original clip in the background and the subject that we cut out in the foreground. And this means that we can add anything we want in between these two layers. And in this case we'll just go for text, so I will enable the type tool and then type ballet. And then exit type mode by hitting ctrl plus enter and then go back to the selection tool by hitting the V key. And now I can resize the text. And as you can see the text is now between the dancer and the background. Remember that the order of the layers is important. In this case this means that you need to add the text layer between the other two layers. If you add this on top for example it won't work. Before we're going to look at the final result I want to mention that if you want to make adjustments to the roto brush effect, you need to make sure that you have the right layer selected. In this layer window for example I don't see the roto brush effect, so this is probably the bottom layer. I will close this one, then double click on the top layer and there we've got the roto brush effect. But still I don't see the outlines of the roto brush. And that's because you need to change the view here at the bottom to roto brush and refine edges. And now you can start making adjustments if needed. And that's it for this one, let's have a look at the final results. I 
hope you enjoyed this After Effects Roto Brush tutorial. If you did, then please like the video or leave a comment below. I would really appreciate that. And if you want to know how to pin text in 3D space, just like I did in this clip, then check out my tutorial that I'll link at the end screen of this video. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day.